algebraic word problems. Anytime a word problem talks about a physical shape, draw the shape. And then label it generically. Now, after you've done that, you can actually you can start actually translating the specific situation that the problem represents. Make sure you check the foreign language called algebra presentation if you're not sure about translating phrases. Example one, the perimeter of a rectangle is 58 feet, and the length is five feet more than twice the width. What are the lengths and widths? Step one, draw the basic shape and label. So we talked about a rectangle, so I draw a rectangle. And rectangles have length and width. By convention, we tend to use the first letter of an item for its variable. So length would become L, and W would become width. Step two, now we start translating. So it says the perimeter of the rectangle is 58 feet, so perimeter is 58, and I'll write that as P equals 58. Again, we're using P to stand for perimeter. Then it says the length is five feet more than twice the width. Well, the first word is is, which means equals, so the length equals, or L equals, Twice the width means two times the width. So we would translate that phrase as five more than twice the width. So 2w plus 5. And we have a known relationship for perimeter for length and width. The perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. Step three, put the pieces together and solve. Well, we know that the P stands for perimeter, which is 58. And we have a name for L, which was 2W plus 5. So we'll put that in. So now we have P equals 2 times 2W plus 5 plus 2W. Now we'll remove these parentheses with the distributive property. 2 times 2W is 4W, and 2 times 5 is 10. Bring the rest of the problem over. Collect like terms. 4w plus 2w is 6w. Bring down the rest of the problem. Use the addition principle to isolate the variable term, so we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. So we get 6w equals 48. Then we use the multiplication principle to change the variable coefficient into a 1. So we're going to get rid of that 6w and make it w by dividing by the 6. So we get w equals 8. But it didn't ask for just the width. It asked for length and width. So now we need to answer the final question, put the answer in the form requested, length and width. We have a little formula for length, which is length equals 2w plus 5. So we put the 8 in for the W, and we do the math. So now we know the length is 21. So to answer the question, L equals 21 feet, W equals 8 feet. Example 2. A boat race from Hilo, Hawaii to San Diego, California covers 2,500 miles. On the seventh day of the race, the captain of the Orca calculated that they were four times as far from Kilo as from San Diego. How far has the Orca traveled? Draw the basic shape and label. Well, we have Hilo and Hawaii and San Diego. Now we'll translate. Well, it says the race covers 2,500 miles, so that must be the distance between Hilo and San Diego. And then it does say that on the seventh day, the boat was at a point four times as far from Hilo as from San Diego. 
So if I let the distance between the boat and San Diego be X, the distance between Hilo and the boat will be four times as great, or 4X. Four times as far from Hilo as from San Diego. And now we put the pieces together. Well, 4X plus X would be the total distance. And the total distance is 2,500. Click like terms, 4X plus X. We use the multiplication principle, divide by 5. Gives us X equals 500. But it didn't ask for X. X is the distance to San Diego. That's the distance to go. So we need to put it in the form requested, which is distance from Hilo. Well, the formula was 4x for Hilo, so we put the 500 in for the x, do the math, and we end up with 2,000 miles. Example 3. Going into the final exam, which will count as three tests, Stephanie has test scores of 85, 92, 93, and 98. What score does Stephanie need on the final exam in order to have an average score of 91? Round to the nearest whole number. Step one, draw the basic shape. And well, there's no basic shape. Okay, so at least write the generalized relationship. So hopefully remember that average is calculated by adding up the items and then dividing by the number of items. So the sum of all the test scores divided by the number of tests will give us our average. So that's our generalized relationship. Step two, now we start translating. So we have four test scores, 85, 92, 93, and 98. And then we're going to let the final exam be an X. It counts as three tests, so I'm going to write it in three times, X plus X plus X. We're going to divide by the number of items, which is 7, and that's supposed to equal 91. Step 3, put the pieces together and solve. So I add up the four known test scores, I get 368. Add up my three X's, I get 3X over 7 equals 91. Clear the fraction by multiplying by 7. And we get 368 plus 3x equals 637. Use the addition principle to isolate the variable term. So we're going to subtract 368 from both sides. So we get 3x equals 269. Then we'll use the multiplication principle to change the variable coefficient into a 1. We'll divide both sides by 3. And we get x equals 89.6, repeating, so 89.6 bar. Step four, put the answer in the form requested, rounding to the nearest whole number. The final exam score needed is a 90. Example four, workers on a certain production line are paid a base salary of $155 per week plus 68 cents for each unit produced. One week, a particular worker earned $377.36. How many units were produced? by this worker. Step one, draw the basic shape. Again, we don't have a basic shape, but we do have a generalized relationship. Base salary plus the unit price, 68 cents, times the number of units will equal wages. So the base salary plus the amount that they are going to earn by the number of items they produce will equal the wages. Now we start translating. When the base salary is 155, and we're going to, it's 68 cents for every unit, so that would be, we'll let n equal the number of units, so it's 0.68 times n. And that's supposed to earn 377.36. So the base salary is 155. For every unit produced, we'll use n to represent the number of units, they get 68 cents, so 0.68 times n. And that's supposed to total 377.36. Put the pieces together, write it a little clearer without that multiplication dot. Use ignition principle to isolate the variable term. We'll subtract 155 from both sides. 
Use the multiplication principle, so we'll divide both sides by 0.68. So it looks like, once we put it in the form requested, is 327 units were produced. 